When I check the resistance on the main winding of this dryer motor, I'm getting about 3.5 ohms. That would tell me, per simple ohms law, that when this motor is energized, that it should draw 34 amps. However, However, when I energize the motor, it's drawing only 4 amps. So if you made any diagnostic decisions based on your static resistance reading and thinking that the motor would draw 34 amps, in effect, ohms lied to you. And that's the subject of this video. In this video, we'll talk about three ways that ohms can lie to you. One is measure resistance versus impedance, which will be a continuation of the induction motor demonstration and a refrigerator inlet valve solenoids. And second is temperature coefficients, which we'll talk about how certain materials increase or decrease in resistance as they change in temperature, namely with incandescent bulbs and with gas ignition igniters. Third is with voltage breakdowns and thresholds, which will demonstrate how a bake element was stripping the breaker in a range, but measured statically just fine when tested with an ohmmeter. And voltage thresholds, like with semiconductors, that readily pass current once they reach a certain voltage threshold, but when measured with your ohmmeter, they look like an open circuit. And that's pretty interesting, so stick around for that. An induction motor, when it's under normal load, largely looks like an inductor in the circuit that it is in. In fact, the measured resistance was 3.5 ohms, but the impedance of the motor is a combination of the inductive reactants and that resistance. The inductive reactants of this motor is much higher than our measured resistance and the resulting impedance is around 30 ohms, which leads to the much lower current draw than we calculate if we were to rely on our static reading. The same concept applies to this refrigerator inlet valve solenoid. The measured resistance of this solenoid is 177 ohms. So that would imply, if we were to rely solely on that resistance reading, that the current draw of this solenoid would be 120 volts divided by 177 ohms, or 0.68 amps. However, when we energize the solenoid, the actual current is about 0.31 amps. So the actual impedance, or the actual ohms, of the solenoid is 387 ohms. Easily twice the ohms that we measured using the ohm meter in our static resistance reading. So as you can see, that 177 ohms that we measured was not representative of how the solenoid would act in a circuit. Which is again, a combination of the inductive reactants of the coil in the solenoid and the measured resistance from our initial reading, that gives you the total impedance of 387 ohms, which again causes it to draw a lot less current than we would have estimated with that original resistance reading. The second way in this video that I'll illustrate to you how ohms can lie is with temperature coefficients. Many materials like the tungsten filament in this incandescent bulb, change in resistance when they're hot. In fact, in incandescent bulbs, that resistance can actually increase by a factor of more than 10. As you can see, we're getting a resistance reading of 30.1 ohms. Based on that, we would expect the current draw of this bulb to be around 4 amps. But when we energize this bulb, our actual current draw is 0.3 amps. So if you take that 120 volts divided by 0.3 amps, that gives you 400 ohms, as opposed to the 30 ohms we measure. So you can see that is way, way off. That's more than a tenfold difference in the actual ohms versus the statically measured ohms. So in this case, ohms definitely did lie to you relative to how this bulb would act when it is energized. By the way, a light bulb has what's known as a positive temperature coefficient 
or PTC. So as temperature increases, the resistance increases. The next demonstration is that of an oven igniter. An oven igniter glows white hot to ignite the gas in a gas oven. This particular igniter, fresh out of the box, measures about 71 ohms. Which implies that the current draw for this igniter would be 120 volts or approximately 1.7 amps. Oven igniters are NTC devices. That is, their resistance as temperature increases the resistance decreases. And the reason for this is oven igniters, they are in series with a gas valve. As the re resistance decreases, the current through the gas valve circuit increases. That increase in current reaches the threshold and opens the valve. That tells the valve that the igniter is drawing enough current to be hot enough to light the gas. The typical current draw, now I'm not going to energize this igniter because these igniters get well over a thousand degrees. So I'm just going to say that the typical current draw for one of these igniters is going to be somewhere between 3 to 3.5 amps. Let's just say 3.2 amps. So at 3.2 amps, the effective resistance of this igniter is about 37 ohms. So that's roughly half of what we measured here. So what that tells you is that this resistance measure that we measurement we took, this static resistance measurement, doesn't really tell you anything about the igniter other than that it's not open, broken and open, because that resistance is going to change drastically when it's in operation. So that's another way in which ohms can lie to. The third and final way that I'm going to demonstrate as to how ohms can lie to you is with insulation breakdown and voltage thresholds. This is one of the more interesting ways that ohms can lie to you in my opinion. This is a bake element that was tripping the breaker in an oven. However, when measuring this bake element with an ohmmeter, everything checked out. There was nothing wrong with its continuity and there was no short to ground. The bake element has a, has a nichrome wire that runs through here that with insulating material around it wrapped in a metal jacket that is grounded to the appliance chassis. And you can see where it blew a hole through that metal covering. However, when I measure and the key measurement here as to why I was stripping the breaker is doing a resistance check to ground. However, when I do that resistance check, I was getting in the 20 mega ohms range, which tells me there is something wrong, but it also is not representative to how much current would have to flow through this to trip the breaker. In order to trip the breaker, it would have to draw about 20 amps for this particular oven probably would have to draw between 30 and 50 amps to trip that breaker. 200, if you actually, when you actually you've got 120 volts to ground on either side. So you have 120 volts, divide that by 20 mega ohms, you're not going to get, you're certainly not going to get 30 to 40 amps. 0.05 microamps or 0 0.05 millionths of an amp. So obviously not even close to enough to trip a 30 to 40 amp breaker, but when this was energized, the insulation broke down and the current flowing through here was enough to trip the breaker, which told me that the effective resistance, if, the, if it tripped at 30 amps minimum, the effective resistance would have been about 4 ohms between here and the outside of this, of this element. So obviously that, that resistance reading of 20 mega ohms is not anywhere 
near representative of how much current would flow through this when its insulation broke down. So when it reached 120 volts, it crossed the threshold where the insulation went from 20 million ohms down to about 4 ohms, minimum of 4 ohms. So that's one way that ohms can lie to you as well. Another way that ohms can lie to you, and probably one of the more interesting in my opinion, is with semiconductors. This is a standard silicone diode. If I hook an ohmmeter across it, I get no reading whatsoever. However, if I use something called diode check, it puts a voltage across a diode. And that voltage is 0.45 volts. That means that in order for you to have any conductivity of this diode, you have to put at least 4.5 volts across it. Otherwise, it will not reach the threshold of conductivity and will not conduct. As long as you have at least 0.45 volts across this diode, this diode actually looks like a wire. In fact, I'll demonstrate with the light bulb how this diode can look pretty much like a wire when it's in series with that bulb. I'm going to connect, I'm going to connect the negative side to this side of the bulb and the positive side over here. And I'm going to show the power supply on here. So this is our little circuit here. So you can see this this circuit here with this diode in series with it, this bulb, is not drawing any current right now. But as I slowly turn this up and cross this 0.4 volt threshold here, it starts to draw current. You can see it starts to draw current. The more I increase that voltage, the more current it draws. And eventually, you can see, as you can see, that bulb is starting to light. So this diode is acting just like a wire right now because it has crossed that threshold, the 0.4 volt threshold. But as soon as I go below that threshold, you can see basically draws no current whatsoever. So in order for this diode to conduct, it had to cross the threshold. Otherwise, it just looks like a completely open circuit. And when you measure the resistance of the diode with your meter, the meter doesn't put enough voltage across it when you're just in the, in the standard resistance mode in order to get it to start conducting. Therefore, with semiconductors and other types of devices that require a voltage threshold in order to function, in effect, ohms can lie to you in those cases.